A ring buffer, no matter how you prefer to draw it, is an array of fixed length, in this case 8. A producer is something that publishes, writes, events to the ring buffer. We use a sequence number, the producer offset, to keep track of which entry we have to write. Let's try to publish something. As you may expect, we increment the sequence number and write the value at the position. Now, let's add a consumer. A consumer is something interested in the events that are published, and it may consume the events as soon as they are available or after some time. We use the sequence number, the consumer offset, to keep track of which entry we have to read. The consumer can read up to the producer sequence number. Once the consumer sequence number reaches the one of the producer, the consumer must wait the producer to write something. The producer will write something, and the consumer will read more. Now, let's see what happens when we reach the end of the array. If you look at the picture, the consumer already processed the item up to the fourth. This means that we don't need them anymore. The producer can wrap around and start over. At this point, we can see two things. To calculate the space available to write new events, we have to take in consideration the position of the consumer. And the sequence number keeps growing. We are at 9, even if the length of the array is 8. And the model operator that we use to calculate the index is giving us the correct position inside the array, even after the wraparound. Once the producer reaches space not yet processed by the consumer, the producer must wait until the consumer does some processing. As soon as the consumer reads something, the producer can publish more events. Even the consumer at some point has to wrap around, and to do that, we rely on the model operator as we did before for the consumer. As you may have noticed, the consumer does not have to process one event at a time, but it can read in a single shot up to the last produced event, which means that the ring buffer provides us a nice batching behavior for free. And this is true for the producer too. Now, Imagine that you have multiple consumers interested in the events being published. Every consumer will have its own sequence number, and they can operate at different speed. We must keep track of the sequence number of the slowest consumer to be able to calculate what was already processed by everyone, and let the producer override those events. The ring buffer is great. It can be implemented without locks, and it can be really efficient if implemented correctly. Unfortunately, being in memory, we have the size limitation. And at some point, we have to throw away events, unless we persist the events. So here it is, the log. With the log, we can use everything that is great from the ring buffer and store everything forever. Using a log, the producer is not blocked by anyone, and it can keep appending events. And at some point, a consumer may subscribe and start processing events. After a certain threshold, it is better to create a new log. We can use a name strategy or an index that, given the sequence number we are interested in, we can look up the log directly. The producer will always append to the latest log. Consumers can decide to ignore all the past events and start from the fresh ones. At any time, we can have consumers starting from any point in the log and processing events at their own speed. We can also have consumers that are no longer interested in this kind of events and they will unsubscribe. If we don't have the money, space, or those information are not really valuable, by keeping track of the minimum sequence number of the consumers, we can always remove unused logs. There are many details we can go through on how to implement a log or a ring buffer, but for today, we're just looking at high-level concepts. So if you are interested in this topic and you haven't done it yet, click on the subscribe button to be notified when a new video is ready. An important concept that you can take away from the ring buffer is the sequence barrier. For multiple consumer, we said that it is important to keep track of the minimum sequence number to be able to throw away or override already processed events. Using the same concept, we can build a complex data pipeline that have dependencies on multiple consumers or processors. If you look at the picture, we have the ring buffer that is exposing 7 as the maximum sequence number that each consumer can process. Process A and B are processing events from the ring buffer at their own speed. Process A is likely faster and is already up to event 6, 
Process B has just finished processing event 5. The minimum sequence number is 5, so process C, D and E that are depending on process A and B can start processing up to the sequence number 5. Those processes are running at their own speed. Process C has consumed up to the sequence number 2, process D has consumed up to the sequence number 4, process E has consumed up to the sequence number 3. Process F is depending on D and E, so it can start processing but up to sequence number 3. If you think in terms of events and sequence numbers, you can build incredibly complex pipelines and you just have to keep around the map with the consumer and the sequence number of the last processed event. Next time, we'll go through more implementation details and some code examples. If you are interested in these topics and you want to see more content, like and subscribe to be notified. If you have questions or you want to know more, leave a comment below.